Guys, welcome back to another video. We're in the garage today and we're actually gonna work on the KTM. Now, the KTM, um, if you guys have watched my um, ride video on it, you notice that I had a portion in there where I said the jetting is a little bit off. It's running just a little bit uh, rich. It's not bad for the first few laps. It is cutting out just slightly uh, in that pilot to, to main area, but we can fix that, that's no problem. Dang, this thing rips, so. Um, I'm not gonna get into all the specifics on how a carburetor works, um, how jetting works, things like that. I'm just gonna talk about the signs that I have on this bike that tell me that it is running rich. I think a lot of people don't understand that um, most of the time their bike is either running too lean or too rich, it's never really dialed in. So I'm gonna go over a couple things here um, without making this a you know 45 minute video and just kind of clean up um, the most common misconceptions of jetting issues, um, rich versus lean running, and show you what we're gonna do to fix the issue that we have with the KTM. Now, um, Little disclaimer here, the KTM jetting is what it is at, what it was at when I purchased it. So even after the rebuild, I went back with that old jetting because it actually ran pretty good. But I'm finding out now um, that it was not as dialed as I thought. Now that the rebuild is good, the motor's fresh, everything's clean, um, we gotta go back to a leaner jetting setup. So let me explain to you what we're gonna do here. Okay, right here, the very first thing that you should always be doing, no matter what the circumstances are, um, is you should find your baseline. So this is assuming that your motor is not a high performance built motor, but you're running your stock standard specifications on, you know, things like piston size, clearance, head spacing, um, th those little things that could cause you to change these things, an aftermarket pipe, um, just all those performance type mods. So right here, I'm going to show you, this is I'm running a Kian PWK39 on this. That's what it comes stock with. And we're gonna look at our elevation changes here. So first thing we have is we've got sea level and then we've got everything above. Right now, I'm at 5,500 foot elevation. So this is my chart that I'm gonna look at, that 5,000 to 7,500 foot elevation chart. And then right here, you're gonna see a temperature reading. So as we follow this over on our temperature, we're gonna look at normal riding conditions, which would be normally in the spring, summertime, you're gonna be 80 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And these are your settings that you're gonna to wanna to run. Now we have a couple things here. This is your air screw from Buried. So basically what that means is when you screw your air screw in, you wanna come out two and a quarter turns. That's standard for this setting right here, 5,500 foot elevation and 79 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you've got your um, idle jet, okay, or what a lot of people call a pilot jet. You need to run a 38. The next thing down would be your needle. This is the needle size and taper right here, which this one's calling for an R1470D. And then the next one down would be your needle clip position, which each needle clip on a carburetor uh, can sit in a different position. Normally there's four to five clip positions that you can change. And the last thing is gonna be your main jet. And a 178 main jet is what KTM is saying that we need to run on this bike. Okay, now that being said, KTM wants a 178 main and a 38 pilot. Right now we are running a 188 main and a 45 pilot. So we're really fat right now, we're really rich. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Um, because as you're riding and your elevation changes, you can go ahead and be okay with a richer jet, richer jet setting, okay? Um, now, I, I, before I get too carried away here and start talking about things, Jetting does not compensate for fuel mixture. What I'm talking about is your oil to fuel ratio mixture should not change, your jetting should. There's a huge misconception out there that when you're running your bike and you have um, you know, spooge and things like that coming out, like this one does because it is running very rich, that, oh my gosh, I need to lean out my fuel. I need to I need to go to a 60 to one ratio or a 50 to one ratio rather than running a 32 or a 40 to one ratio. That is, that is a huge misconception. The reason why we are running um, rich is not because of the fuel mixture. People get that totally confused. The fuel mixture is a combination between 
air and the fuel mixing at the same time, not air, fuel, and oil. The fuel consists of oil and gasoline, and that is what we are mixing so that we can lubricate our crankshaft, lubricate our cylinder, lubricate our power valve, so everything can function without grenading the bike. You need to run the correct oil ratio that your bike calls for. I know the newer KTMs call for a 60 to one ratio. Um, you can run AMS oil, oil to 100 to one ratio. I would never recommend that. Um, but you need to run what the bike is calling for. KTM specifically says on this bike to run a 40 to one ratio or a 60 to one ratio on this bike. Anywhere in between is gonna be okay with that jetting setup that we just talked about. Okay, and going back to our book here, I wanted to show you that it is actually saying uh, 40 to one or 60 to one when using a high grade two stroke um, oil, okay? So always mix to what it says. I've been mixing a 40 to one um, and I'm gonna stick with that 40 to one ratio. I was going to lean it out just slightly, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna leave it at 40 to one. And that does a couple things for us. Um, your oil that is uh, running through your, your motor um, per se is lubricate on a two stroke motor. Your crankcase oil does not lubricate your crank. It only lubricates your transmission and your um, clutch. So on a two stroke, you have a sealed chamber where your crankshaft is only lubricated using the fuel and oil mixture that runs through the carburetor. Um, that being said, by cutting out the oil and the fuel and so-called leaning your mixture out to get rid of your smoke or your spooge or whatever, you are actually cutting down on the lubrication that the crankshaft is getting and the cylinder walls and the power valve, everything else. It's not an advantage to cut out lubrication in the motor. In fact, oil actually creates a little bit more power, believe it or not. So a correct fuel ratio, fuel to oil ratio is very, very critical. Run what your book says and you can't go wrong. All right, now I know I've opened up a can because I've, I've probably talked way too much. I've probably got about eight minutes worth of talking there. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull the carb on this. Actually, in fact, we may not pull the carb, we'll probably just tilt it, replace our main jet, pull the bowl off, replace our main jet and our idle jet, and we will go back into it with the correct settings. Um, reset our fuel screw back to two and a quarter, fire it up, see how it idles, see how it runs. And then if I get to ride this bike again before I sell it, we'll kind of compare, you know, apples to apples just with some different jetting and uh, see how it runs. Where my cutout was happening on this bike was from where the pilot jet or the idle jet takes where, where it cuts off and the main jet takes over. So I was having a slight cutout right there and I'm pretty sure it was due to a rich condition and not a lean condition, obviously. So um, basically I was getting too much fuel through my idle and my main. And when I transitioned all the way to the main, everything was hunky dory. It was, it was ripping. It was good to go. Still a little rich, but it was good to go. So by putting in these new jets, that should cure this issue. And, uh, you know, we'll take it out for a rip. We'll test it. We'll test it before I sell it one way or another. I want to give, give somebody the bike, whoever buys this, um, you know, the best shot of a long lasting, 125 two stroke. So anyway, correct jetting is very, very important. Let's hop into this. got our carb off here I figured it was just easier to pull it from the bike um, being that I mean it only takes like three minutes four or five bolts in three minutes and it's off so much simpler to work on it this way um, so we're gonna pull our float bowl here to access our jetting um, now I did drain the fuel out of this carb there's gonna be a little bit of residual in it but that's to be expected um, this would be a good time too, if you guys are, are you know, planning, whoop, a little bit of residual, a freaking ton, thought I, thought I drained all of it, but apparently I didn't, so. 
Okay, like it never happened, right? A little bit still coming out, but. Alrighty. So, one more screw here. We'll be into the guts of the old girl here. Now, the point of me showing you this is not to create professionals out of you by any means, but it's just to kind of clear up a few things that I've been seeing on the internet, on the forums, um, just stuff like that that is, um, can be brutal to somebody that's new to two strokes and new to the jetting scene. So, okay, now I'm going to try to keep all this where you guys can see it. Um, now right here, we got our main jet right in there is our pilot jet. We're going to go ahead and, uh, pop our main jet first really quick, um, get it out. And it is a 188. It's fairly rich um, for this bike. Okay, now let's pop out our pilot real quick. And uh, get this bad boy out. And this, I think, was a 45, if I remember correctly. And uh, let's see what it is. 45, yep. So we've got a 45 and a 188. We're going to go ahead and replace it with a 38 and a 178. So um, a big drop in the pilot, not so much in the uh, um, main. I mean, it is a, it's a significant drop, but it's nothing crazy. So go ahead and snug this baby in. Now these are just brass on aluminum, so just, just lightly tighten them. Don't get too carried away here. All right. Now, for those of you wondering, well, what's the difference between an 88, a 188, and 178? 178 is a smaller orifice size. So the hole there on the main jet is smaller than the hole on the 188 main jet. So um, same with your um, pilot or your idle jet. Um, the smaller the number, the smaller the orifice. So, um, you know, I, I say obviously, but some people just don't know that. So um, if you didn't, now you do. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put our bowl back on. And then, um, I mean, <laughs> literally, that's all there is to rejetting. is just swapping those out. It, it's not a, not a complicated task. And being that I, you know, just rebuilt this carburetor and everything is vapor honed and fresh and all that, um, we don't need to go ahead and clean the carburetor. So we will just go right back together with it. In fact, I've got about three hours on this bike um, since the rebuild, so it is still about as fresh as it gets right now. Um, and I want to show you guys the spark plug too. So um, stay tuned for just a minute on that. And uh, I'll show you the spark plug and show you what it looks like currently. Um, show you that, you know, what rich looks like on a spark plug. And I'm not going to say that this is the, the do all fix. This is going back to stock and what uh, KTM calls for. So if I'm still running just a tad bit rich, then I will go ahead and jet down a little more even. Um, the most um, deceiving thing out there, I think, is um, all of your shade tree mechanic, backyard mechanic experts that will get on the forums, the two-stroke forums, you know, and just go ahead and give you everything they think about jetting. And then it starts this big firestorm of a thousand comments of everybody and their dog saying, whoa, you're totally wrong. No, you're right. No, everything you're saying is wrong. Um, or you're right here. You're right there. And it's probably going to, I'm probably going to create that same storm with this video. But I am, like I said, I'm only here to tell you um, these little things that I know that can help fix a lot of these issues that a lot of guys have that are just unfamiliar with it. So. Um, again, jetting is not mixing your fuel different. Jetting is changing your air to fuel mixture. Fuel mixture is important based on what the manufacturer calls for. So, okay, let's go put this baby back in and fire it up. All right, we've got our car back on. The final thing we're going to do is run this air screw all the way in and back it out to where it needs to be. So there's all the way in. Got two and a quarter turns. So one, two, and then a quarter turn. So that is about where it was. It was at two and a half. So 
pretty dang close. Now your air screw is your only adjustment that you have, which is right there, is your only adjustment that you have to compensate for elevation without doing a rejet. So basically the air screw allows um, more air to flow through the carburetor and lean the mixture just slightly. Um, so uh, it's your only compensation. So um, if you get to the point where you're maxing out your air screw, you're going three and a half to four turns out, that's maxed out. If you're going all the way into like one turn, you're maxed out. That sweet spot is anywhere from a turn and a half to about three and a half turns. If you stay in that range, you're gonna be in good shape. Okay, I decided to pull the plug to show you guys the plug. And what I want to focus on here is, if you look at this plug, it is very, very dark. The porcelain area and the electrode is very, very dark. Not only that, but you can see just a little bit of mixture there um, on the threads. And that's really only because when I shut it off, it was idling for a while. So it's just slightly wet. If you pull your plug out and it is bright white, you are very lean, especially on a two stroke. Now this, this rule kind of applies for four strokes and two strokes across the board, but really you want that brown looking plug. And this one is just right on the edge of being brown. It doesn't look like it too much on camera, but it is right on the edge of being brown. So um, we're really good with our mixture, according to what the plug's telling us. Um, now, a lot of guys will plug chop. They'll cut the chop. They'll they'll chop the threads off the plug, see the porcelain all the way through. Um, you know, to each their own. Um, do your thing. But uh, just use your plug to uh, as an advantage to see how your bike is running. Like I said, if this is white, more than likely you're going to have a, seize, a seized up piston and, uh, you know, galled cylinder. Um, if it's totally black and you have a lot of fouled plugs, you're obviously way too rich. So um, that sweet spot is that brown looking plug. And this one actually looks really, really good. All right, guys, we got everything cleaned up. We're going to turn on our fuel, make sure we're not leaking anywhere. Um, not spilling all of it out on the floor. We're going to go ahead and fire it up, um, see how it idles with our settings that we have. I'm not even going to use a choke. I'm just going to try to fire it up, see how it does. Probably going to need the choke. It's a little cool outside. But uh, let's go ahead and see what it does. Okay. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you right now. Before when I started the bike, because it had that rich mixture, um, I, I would have to help it, help it along. With this new jet, I noticed it just fired third kick and it's idling perfectly all by itself. The idle's cleaned up, it sounds a little bit better already. Granted, it's, it's still cold, um, but so far, so good. The bike is sounding awesome right now, we like this. I'm about to have a smoke show in my garage here. But even now, it is not smoking as much just because the pilot is a smaller pilot. Now, we'll let it warm up just a little bit so we don't gall the cylinder. Um, but another misconception too that I hear a lot on the forums and uh, just online in general is that two strokes shouldn't idle. That is bull crap. They should idle. They should always idle. If jetted cor correctly, and your motor is is in good condition, good compression, things like that. It should idle. Cur it should idle no problem. So, bike is running great. We're gonna turn the idle down just a little bit. There we go. That sounds pretty dang good. Notice it's not billowing smoke like it was before. So that 38, that 38 Pilot really did help out, help out a lot with this. Now before I die of carbon monoxide poisoning. We're gonna see if it revs out okay without, you know, making my neighbors totally mad at me. And we're not quite warm. I mean, my radiators are just starting to get, just starting to get warm. We're not quite there. Um, so the true test will be when I go ride it, if it starts cutting out like crazy. 
And you guys can see right now, the smoke is very faint. It's not near as rich, so. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and kill it right here. And, uh, wow, that was really loud, actually. Um, yeah, I hope this kind of clears some things up for you guys. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to teach you to be experts here and take my advice for what it's worth. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm here to entertain you guys and give you guys a little bit of knowledge, but I'm not here to um, make your bike run perfect. I'm here to just give you um, bits of information and give you the knowledge that I've gained over the years of working on these things and hopefully help you out solving your own issues. So um, as far as the KTM goes right now, I can tell you the idle is cleaned up. It is better, just like I said. Um, so this is obviously an improvement right now. We'll find out when I get on the gas, when I open it wide open, whether or not that, that bog is fixed between the pilot to main um, transition. And uh, I'm betting it's, I'm betting it's going to be good. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you picked up a few tips, learned a little bit of something. That's the goal always. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll go rip the uh, 125 and get a second ride video out for you guys. Uh, more of a vlog style ride video. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Give me a like. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.